Well, I'm Kelly. For those of you who do not know me, uh, I wrote this, and, and after I had it written, I, you know, I thought of everything I wanted to say and didn't, and I was tempted to go in and, and edit things, but I'm like, you know what, I think however it came out is how it was intended to come out, so I just left it alone. Um, and I meant to read this at home out loud so I knew how long it was, and I neglected to do that, so I'm sorry if I go over. <sighs> All right, this is called God Winks, is what this is called. Not too long ago, I heard the term God Winks. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, God Winks are those little things, or sometimes big things, that God does for us to let us know that he is still there behind the scenes, never forsaking us, always watching out for us, and graciously providing for us. I'd like to tell you about some of the times in my life that God has winked at me. I've been a believer since I was eight years old. I didn't grow up in a particularly religious family. Most of my church experience stemmed from attending various youth groups with friends when I was in grade school. As I grew up, without those strong roots, I believe I could have gone either way with my faith. I could have walked away from it, or I could have kept it in my heart. When I was 14 or 15 years old, I prayed my first real heartfelt prayer. Up until that point, it was just the nightly repetitious routine of saying the old, now I lay me down to sleep prayer, followed by God bless mommy, God bless daddy, etc. But I came to a moment where I really felt like I needed divine intervention. So as that teenager grasping for something bigger than herself, I reached out to God, I reached out to the God I believed loved me, cared for me, and could grant my wish. I know that God doesn't always answer our prayers in the way that we want, but for me, that time, he did. I feel like this was a key factor that solidified my faith. It was a day that my roots grew so much deeper. Being my first real heartfelt prayer, had God denied my request, I think I very well could have gone the path of walking away from my faith. And I think more than wanting to answer my prayer in the way that would please me, God wanted to reveal himself to me. That God wink that day took away any chance that I might ever doubt his existence. It took away any feelings, past, present, and future, that I am alone in this world because I know he is always with me and he will never leave me. Fast forward a couple of decades and the me at that time had a daily routine of going on morning prayer walks with my 15-year-old late puppy Spot. In my prayer time, I always included two things. I always prayed for a new car with very specific details laid out. And I always prayed for a new house with very specific details laid out. I went on these prayer walks every day for over a year without fail. Rain couldn't keep me from going. Poor Spot, I took him out once in extremely windy, blizzardy weather. (laughs) Sometime during that year, God answered my prayer for a car. I wanted something spacious, something good on gas mileage, and something that was within our budget. Ephesians 3.20 tells us that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Buddy and I, not having a good travel vehicle, borrowed one a couple of times from some good friends, a great brother and sister in Christ. When I prayed for God to give me a car, spacious and good on gas, in the back of my mind, their car is exactly what I had in mind. God is so wonderful and good, he gave me that very car. Our friends gifted it to us, not even knowing that I had been praying for a new car. We serve a great God, a great God. Like I said, Spot and I went walking Spot and I went out walking every day for over a year. It was only when we lost him on Christmas Day, about four or five years ago, that I quit going. I guess without my companion, I lost the heart to do it. At that time, I stopped praying regularly for that house I wanted, though I had no doubt in my mind someday God would bless me with it. It was to be at least four bedrooms, have one and a half to two baths, It was to have a kitchen with lots of cabinet space. 
It was to have a separate dining room away from the kitchen. It needed a big garage for Buddy, a dishwasher for Lily. It needed to be a place where I could have the chickens that I always wanted, and it was to be in the country. I told you, I prayed very specific details. <laughs> well, close to this time a year ago, I think it was more like late January or early February, my daughter Raylynn, knowing we all wanted a new house, was doing some house hunting online. She found what, from the outside, looked like a big, beautiful house. It was located here in Salina. After checking into this house, I was apprehensive about it because it was up for auction. It was to be sold as is, without knowing the condition of the inside of the house. What we did know is that it had been abandoned. So who knows what kind of condition. <laughs> Despite the apprehension of not knowing what we'd be getting ourselves into, I think we all just kind of lusted after it because of how big it was. During the process of gathering funds to bid on this house, and we were gonna bid its asking price. I went to it every day for about a week, sometimes with Raylynn, sometimes with both Raylynn and Lily. They prayed over the house from the car, but I would do a prayer walk around the entire house, laying hands on it and praying for God to bless me with a house, just a house. I never specifically prayed that God would give me that house. The most specific thing I prayed was that God would bless me with a place that would welcome many people for holidays and other gatherings. The day came that they were taking bids on the house. While we were still scrambling to get the funds together that morning, we were five minutes late in getting our bid in. After not receiving any acceptable bids, the house was taken off the market. Our chances of, that, of purchasing that house were gone, but the fact that it was in Salina, that our chances Okay, our chances of purchasing that house were gone, but the fact that it was in Salina never fit my criteria to begin with. The fervor for house hunting was ignited and I continued to search. I was discouraged that nothing fit my criteria. Then I came across this house in the small rural town of Minneapolis. From the pictures, I gathered enough information to know that it was four bedrooms, it was one and a half bath, there was wall-to-wall -wall kitchen cabinets. It had a separate dining room away from the kitchen. It had a dishwasher, though that doesn't mean anything to Lily anymore because she doesn't live with me anymore. <laughs> it had a big garage and it sat on very close to half an acre so there would be plenty of space for me to have my chickens. While not technically in the country, I had always loved the idea of living in a small town. We viewed it and then viewed it again and then we finally placed an offer on the house which was accepted. We bought the house in March, but we didn't move into it until May. It is everything I wanted in a house, but that is not the special part. That is not the God wink. I was feeling unsure if we made the right decision. I was second guessing and wondering if we bought the house in alignment with God's will for us. The weekend we moved in, my mom and my grandma were coming to see the new house. <clears throat> they called me for directions. After giving them the directions, my grandma was convinced she lived in that house, but she said she would know when they arrived. Sure enough, she confirmed that she and my mom's oldest sister lived there for the first few months of my aunt's life. The house had actually belonged to my great-grandparents, my mom's dad's parents. After however many years, the house was returned to the family, and I am now the fourth generation to live there. <laughs> that was the God wink of all God winks. I was already happy to have the house I always wanted, but he chose to make it all the more special for me. We serve a great God. To him, I am very thankful. As we get into the holiday season, I can't help but feel like all of December is a God wink. This is the month that we celebrate our Savior's birth. This is the month that we celebrate God's love for us by remembering that he sent Jesus, his only son, to be a perfect sacrifice for us so that our sins can be forgiven and that we can have everlasting life if we choose it. I know that I can be tempted to stress over finances this month. I wanna give everybody all that they ever wanted for Christmas. And if you have teenagers, you know that they do not want inexpensive things. <laughs> but my challenge for myself this year 
And anyone else who needs the reminder is to let it go. Don't fret about the things that don't matter. Instead of bustling about, trying to make sure everyone gets everything on their Christmas list, focus on the true meaning of Christmas. We have a loving Savior who died for us. In him, we have unending hope. Recognize that hope. See God winking at you, saying, I am here and I love you. With him, we have all we ever need. Thank you, God bless, and have a very merry birth of our Savior season. Thank <laughs> you.